Father Natarius, I'm very honored and humbled that you took the time to sit down and talk to us about what happened yesterday. I mean, we're on the eve of the centennial of Roll Corps, just a few months away, and all of a sudden, the Hawaiian icon, you bring it into the cemetery, lay it next to the grave of Brother Jose, and it just starts to pour myrrh. I know for you, it's... it's and I hate to say it this way, not, not that it's not a big deal, but as the guardian, you're, you're used to these types of things. But I was standing there two feet away, and it's just unbelievable that you can, you can see the, the myrrh just get bigger and bigger. The spots are just growing and growing. I guess the, the question, if I may, forgive me for even daring to ask this, do you have any idea why? Why is the icon streaming so much myrrh at the grave of Jose now on the eve of the centennial of Rocor? Why? That's a good question. Um, the reaction should always be awe and fear you know, the mother of God is manifesting herself in a visible way. Now we understand that the grace comes from her son, but we believe as Orthodox Christians that it is through her prayers, her intercessions, that these manifestations have shown forth. And the Mother of God has always been with us. This year as we come upon the centennial of the Russian Church Abroad, we honor the men and women that have served and have defended orthodoxy against fascism, communism, 
One of those people, of course, is St. John Maximovich, St. Jonah, Father Seraphim Rose, Metropolitan Filaret, but also Brother Jose Munoz, who was the last martyr of the 20th century. It is very noteworthy that throughout these last 100 years, as the church has been exiled, so to speak, not only do these holy men and women help lead the faithful of the church abroad throughout the world, but it is also these grace-filled icons that are also leading us. The Kursk, the Montreal icon, and of course the icon of the Mother of God from Hawaii, which has been manifesting this holy and sacred myrrh for 12 years now. You asked why. I think, you know, as small as I am to ever try and understand how great the manifestation is, I think that it is to guide us. She lays forth a path for us. And many times we stray from the path, as Orthodox Christians especially. And she sets us forth again on that path. And of course, it is our pride and our arrogance and our ego, most especially, where we tend to stray. And it is the Mother of God that brings us back. The Church Abroad has been exceedingly blessed. And the foundational mission of the Zerubezhna Tserkov has been to care for the people. It wasn't to run and to hide, it was to establish churches, it was to build community, and it was to bring people together to worship Christ. In the traditions that we have inherited for the past thousand years, it's interesting that in Russia, when Christianity was legalized, I hate to say that, but, or, or I should say that the godless regime fell and Christianity could come out from the catacombs, many people in Russia looked to the church abroad because we had maintained traditions and customs that had been lost. So you ask, why? I think it, ultimately, it is because we are on a, a sacred path and the Mother of God leads us. Earlier, we celebrated the Panechida, first by Father Viktor Potapov and clergy and then later by the Metropolitan. And we noticed a greater abundance of the holy myrrh over the grave of Brother Jose Munoz. Brother Jose Munoz is the last martyr of the 20th century. He was the last. There have been more since the, 21st, the start of the 21st century, but he, has, he was the last. God chose him. Uh, a person who uh, became Orthodox, was not born Orthodox, but converted, and no doubt that God chose him for a, a specific purpose. Uh, he was uh, the keeper of this miraculous icon, which was mirth streaming. And uh, this also is a sign, because this is not something that was uh, a, 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 uh, some sort of a false icon. Many people have uh, were ex experienced to see that this was a true uh, true sign from God because there was it was criticism or, or doubt that perhaps this was something that was um, uh, not genuine but uh, the fact that it was for so many uh, years it exuded this uh, beautiful aroma and 
poured from, from this icon shows that this is, uh, again, God's grace working to help the faithful. And he was the mother of God's chosen guardian who went forth into the world and sacrificed so much, his health, his life, his livelihood, his peace, in order to fill his life with chaos by constant travel, by being bombarded with you know, requests and, and basically hearing the, sor the sorrows and the tears and the pains of thousands and thousands of people. Father, I hate to admit it, but this is my first time at a pilgrimage in honor of the martyrdom of Brother Jose. Um, I have to admit that I always had this feeling like, well, someone else will be there. Someone else will cover it. It'll be fine. And it's just someone else. Someone else will be there. That's kind of what I kept telling myself over and over. But today when I, end, when the, I ended up here um, and I saw, I saw the people from Washington, D.C., Father Victor's parish, these people are driving... I don't know, seven, eight hours from Washington, D.C., more, nine hours, I think it is. Where's everybody else? Because if it wasn't for the parishioners in Washington, D.C., how many people would be up on Yehida? 10, 20? So I guess the question that I have for you, Father, is why are people like me not getting it? What is it going to take to wake people up. To a certain extent, I guess the question is, what can you say to wake me up? You know, you know, why so few? Why are people not sort of getting it? You know, you want to kind of just shake them and say, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Don't you see what we have here? Don't you understand the grace that we have been given? Not just in these wonders that God has given us, but in the people who have chosen to live their lives for Christ. We struggle. We struggle throughout our days and nights. And we give so little of what we can give. And yet there are people who we know of, like Brother Jose Munoz, who gave their lives 100%, who struggled, who was spit on, who were persecuted, who were treated like filth, And yet, at the end of the day, they were championed by God. Why? Because they chose to give their life for Him. We saw the way the holy icon reacted over the grave of Brother Jose. Why is that? Several years ago, we took the icon to Alaska, the Hawaiian Iveron icon to Alaska. And we placed, we opened the reliquary of St. Herman. We placed the icon upon the relics of St. Herman of Alaska in Kodiak. And the people came throughout the night and kept vigil and prayed. And the next morning before liturgy, we lifted, the relic, we lifted the icon up off the relics and there was a puddle of myrrh. And there was myrrh that was actually streaming up toward the inside of the casket where the myrrh doesn't normally stream. It usually streams down, yet this was going against gravity. It was the exact same feeling, the exact same thing that I witnessed over Jose's grave. This man is a saint. He is a saint, and we need to remember that. We need to champion his cause because There are so few left in the world. 
but they are here and they do exist and they can't be forgotten. We cannot forget about them. To forget the saints is to forget God. To mock the saints is to mock God. This is why, you know, Western Christians and those who have fallen away from orthodoxy throughout the centuries and have turned their back on the mother of God, turned their back on the saints, saying they are not needed. I remember Elder Porfirio saying, to deny them is to deny Christ. To deny Jose, the last martyr of the 20th century, is to deny Jesus Christ. This man gave his life for, for the mother of God, gave his life to such an extent that he was murdered. He was martyred for his life, brutally. He was tied to a bed, severely beaten. The way he died in such a, a violent uh, way, uh, again, uh, shows that uh, God uh, permitted this, perhaps to uh, serve as sort of a cleansing, uh, a martyrdom of cleansing of any sins that he, he may have had in his lifetime. Um, how do I say this? When a person passes on, usually the moment of their death is fixed upon their face. Many times people will have to manipulate them, you know, uh, at mortuaries, they'll have to manipulate the face, especially in uh, people who die under horrible circumstances. Usually it is um, a face of terror at times, yet he's smiling. I believe, and you know, I don't know anything and I'm really nobody, but I believe that the moment, at the moment of his death, it was the mother of God that came to get him because he's smiling. And to die under such tragic circumstances and to live such an exemplary life is, uh, how do I say this, is what a Christian what a Christian chooses to, um, how do I say this? Faith in action, I guess you can call it. Exactly. It's what, what we strive for. It's what a Christian strives for, to be one with Christ. And most Christians, you know, um, especially the monastics, will tell you, oh, I want to be martyred, I want to be martyred, I want to be martyred, because I'll be with Christ in spite of my sins. And this man achieved that in, in these times, in these modern times. And we're witnessing martyrs now in, you know, in these wars that are happening in the Middle East. We're witnessing people dying for their faith as Christians, being beheaded, being killed. Do we deny them as we deny Jose? No, of course not. These are the ones at the front of the line fighting. And these are the ones that we as Christians should strive to emulate. Brother Jose's life, if you read about it, if you learn about his life, learn about his legacy, it is one of emulation. I would like to uh, see Jose Munoz uh, as, recognized as saints, saints of the church. Now, uh, <clears throat> canonizations or glorifications have to uh, come from the grassroots, that is from the faithful who uh, turn to uh, people like this, uh, asking their prayers, their in intercession before the, the uh, heavenly king. And when they experience miracles, divine help through the prayers of these people, then there's a, always a movement asking for recognition of uh, holy people as saints of the church. So this needs to take place.